What's going on everybody? Matt Wasik, CEO of Landscape Marketing Pros here. And today I want to share with you step-by-step -step how to set up a Google My Business listing for your company. So I recognize that a lot of you guys here on the channel may not be veteran business owners that have been in business for five or 10 years who already have all your online presence at least established and you may be trying to maybe optimize and enhance your traffic because that's what a lot of our clients are at Landscape Marketing Pros, are seasoned business owners that have been in business for three to five, 10 years or maybe even more and they want to maximize their online potential. This is something that when we we hop into my computer here that I'm going to show you step by step. Costs you zero dollars to set up, but it's one of the most powerful assets that you can leverage to generate more phone calls and also generate more traffic to your website simply by just being found in the Google search results for the searches that your prospective clients are typing in. And even if you're someone who's been in business for a number of years, I still recommend that you watch this because there are going to be a couple tips and optimization tricks that you're going to learn in this that will probably help you with maximizing the potential of what your Google My Business listing can generate you. So without further ado, let's hop into my computer and get started. All right, welcome into my computer. The first thing that you're going to want to do is go over to google.com forward slash business or just search Google My Business that'll take you over to a page like this. The next thing that you're going to need to do is make sure you have an email account that is Gmail preferred. This isn't a customer facing email account or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that or anything. This is strictly just for your purpose and administrative purposes within your company. So what you're going to want to do is just do that. Go to sign in, sign in, get all that connected and all that sort of stuff with whatever email account you're going to use. And then what you're going to want to do is go and create a new page. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is just type in your business name right here and nothing's going to show up. So you're going to want to just select create a business with this name. So for those of you who might be brand new to the channel, this was my landscaping company's name. So the next thing you want to do is just click next. And then what you're going to want to do is select your category. This is important primarily if you're getting started. So Let's say you offer lawn care, landscaping, and snow removal. What you wanna do for this first category, which you can add more later, just like it states right here, I would highly recommend selecting whichever in the over the long haul, not just today, not just next month, but for the next multiple years, what service do you want to be your primary service? Which one do you wanna have the most revenue in and the most clients? Do you wanna really focus on landscape installation or do you wanna focus on uh, being lawn care or lawn maintenance company? Or do you want the primary focus to be on uh, irrigation or tree service or whatever it is? So the category for landscaping, if you wanted to be your focus to be on landscape installation and then you upsell those clients on maintenance, then I would select landscaper. Otherwise you can do lawn care service um, there's lawn care service. Next one below that is lawn sprinkler system contractor. If we go here to tree service, that'll be right there as well. And uh, snow removal is going to be there, snow removal service. And then also if you wanted to do landscape design, you can do that as well. So we're just gonna go with landscaper for this one. Now the next thing they're going to ask is, do you want to add a location that customers can visit like a store or an office? And for some of you, if you're just getting started, you're probably running out of your house. Whether you live in just a regular neighborhood, you live on some acreage in a little bit more rural of an area or whatever it may be, what I would highly suggest doing is selecting yes on this because there are a couple of different ways to go about it. You can either have a service area type of business on here or you can have your address be shown on there. And our clients that have their Google My Business listing showing up with their address shown, whether that's their shop or in their office, or it's just they're operating out of their house or at least their headquarters are technically at their house. Those outperform those that have the service area ones where it's just shown in a city and then they serve a bunch of different cities around. It kind of just draws a circle on a map or a square or whatever on the Google map. I would highly suggest doing your address on here. I know some people might be worried, well, people will know where I live. And if if there's an issue with something, it's there are so many resources where someone could really figure out what they need to find out to, to get in touch with you if they really wanted to, to do that, if there were an issue like that. But the upside with, especially if you're in like a neighborhood and using this, is that someone goes to Google and they type in landscaper near me, they type in lawn care company near me, land uh, snow removal company, my city, whatever it is. And you show up and your Google map shows up right there in the in the map pack in the first bit. And someone sees that, oh, these guys are like three streets away over from me. They're going to check out the reviews and they see, okay, you got good reviews. Boom, I want to hire this guy because they are local and they're going to treat us good because the reviews are good as well. So I would suggest, yes, you could try no and just go with just adding all of your cities. However, I would just recommend going and clicking yes, especially if you have a shop or an office, then without a doubt, then use this for sure. Now for our email, what we're gonna enter in here is we're just going to do one, two, three, main street. And if there's a north or anything like that, this is very, very crucial to have this set up exactly how your address is written on your website and then all of your other directory websites that are out there like Yelp and Angelus, all those other ones out there. If it is 123 Main Street with a capital M space 
a shortened version for street abbreviated st period space capital n period if that's like that on all those other directories or you're going to do that or that's how your your current mail is do that here and then also do that for all those other directories because it needs to be congruent and when it's congruent with that as well as the city name so we're just going to say we're in maple grove and then of course you have your state and then zip code this all needs to be congruent. You have this at the bottom of your web, so you have in all those directory profiles, your Facebook page, everything like that, it all needs to be congruent because when it's congruent, Google sees that, okay, all these websites, all these citations, these are trustworthy. This company is obviously trustworthy. We need to increase the visibility. So that way our users, Google is saying this figuratively, our users, people searching, need to be able to find this. So what needs to be congruent. Same thing with your phone number as well. For this, if you put in your address, it's going to just put your real address here, but because I basically just put a random fake address in there, there's not gonna be anything there. So let's just say we're at this Panera Bread as our headquarters, for example. So we're gonna click next. The next thing that you wanna do is, do you also serve customers outside of this location? That's of course, yes. So what you're gonna do is type in your headquartered city right here. And what I like to do is I like to go by the county. So if, if you have a big service area, otherwise if you only serve 10 surrounding cities or something like that, then just put those in. So Maple Grove, Osseo, Plymouth. Next one would be New Hope. And for time's sake, we're gonna keep this video short. Let's do these cities here. First city though, make sure that that is your headquarters city where you are based. Make sure that is the first one there. If you're someone who does a, has a big service area, then just go by county and, and include them on there and that will work out just fine. But make sure you have your headquarters city in there. Now the next step is the contact details. So the first thing I really suggest that you do is if you have it in your budget, and that's about 30 bucks a month to manage the call track and that sort of stuff. And that doesn't record calls, but it, it will allow you to route calls from the phone number that you have displayed to your cell phone number or your office line, whatever it is. And that way you can track them. That's what the important thing is here. If you don't wanna track them, which I, I really suggest tracking them. It's just, it makes things so much easier. You could also look into Twilio. That one's very affordable. Signal wire is another one that's, it's a little bit more tricky to set up, but it's extremely, extremely affordable. It's the cheapest by far of anybody, signalwire.com. And so you want to take that and get a local number uh, to your area. You can get a toll free one if you want, but I think local is going to convert better because people see that, oh, it's a, it's a local company. So we'll just do the phone number here. Let's just say it is this number here. If you recognize that phone number, leave a comment down below. Only people that are around my age are gonna get that one. But so anyways, we're gonna go here to the website address. So we're gonna go my old website domain. And actually we wanna make sure if you have www in your website, which I would highly suggest doing, it's just a full complete URL, make sure that that's in there, in this place right here. And if you don't have a website currently, there is a playlist here on our YouTube channel or check out the blog post on our website. You can learn a little bit more about building a website on your own to at least get some presence established if our service package isn't within your budget quite yet. So that way you can at least get started, get some clients coming in. And that way in three, six, nine, 12 months from now, hopefully we can be having a conversation about how our digital marketing package can help you scale your business. All right, so there we go. Now the listing is completed. So we're gonna click finish. Now the next thing that they're going to ask you to do is choose a way to verify. So the only way to do this is verifying a, with a postcard via mail. So that's why you entered in your address even if you chose the service area route because they have to send you this postcard. If you do not enter this verification code on the postcard, your listing will not be live. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just type in your name and what you wanna do there is just click mail and then another screen will pop up and it'll say, hey, we'll be there in about five business days. Then it should show up I'd give it seven business days. And then the postcard will arrive in the mail. You just open it up. There'll be a five or a six digit code right in there. You log back in just like we did here. You go from the Google Business homepage, sign in, and then it'll say, hey, verify right here. You just click the link, enter in the numbers, and there you go. Your listing is verified. I'm not gonna click mail because we don't need the postcard for this, for my old company sent to the Panera Bread in Maple Grove. So from within your dashboard, what you can do here, some of the stats you wanna see, some of the performance, the ones that really matter are website visits and calls. You can see kind of turning down a little bit. It is fall, we're getting into a little bit towards middle October, so things aren't as crazy. When it's the peak season, it's going to be March, April, May, first half of June for most of the services in the outdoor service realm. Things do pick up, especially 
later into fall so with leaf removal and especially right now actually sprinkler bullets are pretty popular but then snow removal as well the week before the first actual snow event is we're going to see the absolute highest demand for snow removal because people that didn't really plan ahead they're going to be looking for a quote for service and to sign up so all right the first thing that you want to do though is go to info and a lot of the stuff if you're listing is not yet verified you're not going to be able to publish it but you can go in and add each one of these services to your categories so what you want to do is just click on the pencil here and for the additional categories just add every single service that you have you can see here some examples tree service topsoil supplier so if you want to deliver black dirt or whatever you can do that lawn care landscape designer concrete all these different services right here you can also see the service areas we just go by the counties because again, this particular client that this was actually getting routed to uh, serves a, a pretty wide service area. So we have it set up for that. You'd probably just have it for your main city that you're based in and then all the surrounding towns and or suburbs or however, depending on where you're located, that might be a little bit different. But if you serve a full county, then you could do that as well. So hours of operation, this is crucial right here. Whatever your hours of operation are going to be, let's say you wanna be Monday through Friday, eight to six and then you saturday nine to three or, or nine to one or something like that if it's whatever it's going to be right here that forever these whatever these days you're going to have set up make sure it is congruent across all again just like the the address and phone number make sure that's written out all congruently <clears throat> on all those different directory profiles on your website as well because this is where one of those things those signals that it t communicates to google and it needs to be written in the same manner same thing with the phone number i don't think i touched on this but have it be your phone number on your website a parenthesis three digits parenthesis space three digits dash four digits if you're in the u.s and if you're in somewhere else i don't know how they do it but i'm and if you're somewhere out and if you're somewhere outside the u.s then however it's done there so for the services here you can fill all this out this one was actually propagated by google but the last thing that you're definitely gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have your open date on here and you can just do the year and month of when your company was opened up. And then of course, this description here is really, really important. You're gonna to wanna to sell right here. Use some sales skills right here with this because you're essentially, this is something that's going to be displayed here and when someone searches your company name, from there, add your photos. Now this is gonna be really important to add photos right here. Ideally, taken with your phone at a job site, with uh, on landscape mode of course so with the phone turned sideways you don't want it like this you don't want an instagram story you want it to be sideways what you're going to want to do is have those photos taken wherever they're at, at that property because then and make sure your location is turned on and then either send that photo to yourself via email and that way the geotagging is inside the image or if you can do it right there from your phone that's even better because what that's going to do is communicate to google that okay this photo of this lawn this was mowed in the city of champlin for example and what's gonna happen there is Google's gonna see that, okay, they serve in Champlin, this photo right here, or if someone leaves a review and they have a, they took a photo at their house with their phone, and that's gonna go up on there, it's gonna see, okay, that's right there. And that location, it's gonna really allow your listing to be higher and higher up for those local searches because you're gonna be able to be found in that city where you're based. It's also gonna help bring your website up a little bit as well because it's all interconnected right here. So those are some of the first initial optimization tips that I recommend right there. One other thing you can also do is enter the short name if you want. So if you have a shortened version of your company name, you could add that right there. For this one, we don't have that, but that's pretty much it for a Google My Business listing. It's going to take time to get your listing to rank. It takes time to get your website to rank. But the thing is, is once you have it ranking, all you have to do is maintain it. This is what we tell all of our clients is that obviously there are costs associated with maintaining it, but once you have it, boom, you have just, you have tons and tons of traffic coming without direct clicks. Whereas if you're running ads, you have to pay for each one of those clicks or all the impressions if you're running it on social media. So one last thing is you're definitely gonna to wanna to do is make sure you get reviews. Just simply go ask one of your clients to leave a review. We do this for our clients. We have a review syndication system that we use for our clients at Landscape Marketing Pros that are a part of the, the service program. It really streamlines that process, but if you're just getting started, what you can do is just go to here, just click on view on maps, and you can then go here to share, copy link right here, and then just send that to them via email. And if they're logged into Google, they can leave a review right there. Pretty quick and easy. The process we use is very, very streamlined. People can scan a QR code and it prompts them to leave a review after one step. So there's that's one option. But if you're just getting going, this will work out just fine. It just takes a little bit more legwork to manually send this out to people. So if you'd like to learn more about marketing your business online, browse around our channel, a ton of other videos. Also, you can head over to our website, just check out the blog. We have some posts here with different marketing guides, that sort of stuff. 
And if you're ready to take your business to the next level, what I would suggest doing is heading over here to book a call, watch this quick video. It's less than a minute long. Select your date and time, and then answer a couple quick questions about your business, and we'll be set up for your meeting. So if you have any questions on this, be sure to leave a comment down below. Also, be sure to go down below if you like this to drop a like. If you're not already subscribed to our channel here, hit that subscribe button down below and also smash the bell for notifications so you know when all the newest content's uploaded here on our channel. With that said, I will see you guys in the next one.